Hello, I'm David Hunt and welcome to The Art Hunter. My guest today is a contemporary sculptor, taking old school styles and turning them on their heads, evoking classic themes with a particular focus on the nude a male. Uh, but what's this thing about sheep? We're going to have to talk about that a little bit. Uh, multiple commissions, including a Lady of Justice on the front of the Victorian County Court. Hello. Uh, you know, Sir Donald Bradman Platt at the Sydney Cricket Ground. This guy's too important. Why is he on this show? And we will certainly be chatting about the City of Yarra's courage. Uh, last year, his, his exhibition of 45 Downstairs was a complete sellout. So welcome, William. Thank you, David. It's a oh, pleasure. Overachiever. Come on. Mm. Well, I've been around for a long time, so it just gradually builds up if you keep at it for long enough. If you keep at it for long enough. So where did it all start? You know, like, because what you do is mammoth. It's mm. massive. I and mean, you can see it behind us now and, and we'll be flashing mm. it up on screen as well. You know, it's, it's big work. It's major work that mm. you do. Um, commi a lot of commission stuff. Where did the interest come from? Well, look, David, I was a little boy growing up in the suburbs. Very uh, normal suburban house. And I looked at art books and I looked at these incredible sculptures and paintings and interiors. And I thought, where is this? <laughs> it's certainly not where I'm living. And that just sparked my interest. And I thought, who makes this? And I thought, well, I can make that. I was always a kid who made things. And okay. so I just started making things that I wanted to exist. Right. And going through, you know, art galleries and looking at sculptures in the city of Melbourne. And so many of the really important ones that inspired me are still there. Wow. And so now I've actually made some myself and people hopefully are as inspired as I was by having artwork in the public realm. Right. So, but the, the journey that you would have had to have gone on to with the profession like that you do, mm. the scale on what mm. you do, the quality of what you do. Uh, and I want to talk about one in particular later on, but you know, like your training, what, what's your mm. background? Well, I'd always been a, a arty kid. Yep. In, and I was very lucky that in my high school, I was encouraged and uh, supported in what I wanted to do. Was it sculpture or was it drawing and well, everything. E everything? It was just right. everything. It was yep. that kind of basic grounding and just enjoying making everything from you know, sewing things to um, ceramic stuff to drawing and painting. Yep. Um, and then when I, le when I finished high school and I actually started working in theatre at the Melbourne Theatre Company making things, hey, making props, go, eh? costumes, stuff. Was that hard to get into, William? I was just lucky. lucky? I just met, yeah. met people out at nightclubs. Yeah, and, as uh, you do. And, <laughs> you know, and just started working. And that was a very good grounding for lateral thinking of how to make things. And that's really okay. very much yep. what my work uh, embraces is a kind of theatrical illusion and working across a variety of materials. Right. Um, so I don't restrict myself to wood carving or bronze casting or um, I, I mainly model things in clay and then cast them in different materials. But did you go to university to study yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. I went to uh, Monash University uh -huh. and did a sculpture degree there. And, and, and years ago, and luckily at that time, there was a lot of Im importance placed on actual, the ability to make and having the skills to do things. And so it actually left you with a set of tools that you left university with, which would enable you to make things work in different fields with some skill. With a lot of the, the work that you do, I, I can, you know, like it's very classical mm. and, um, and you know, like you, a throwback to Grecian or Roman mm. times. Yeah. Uh, did you, have you travelled to Greece and Italy to check it all out? I've travelled all through Europe and, of course, love it. That was the art books that I looked at I'm, when I was, I was, a, when I was a kid, was, yep. you know, this sort of, <laughs> you know, 
Statue of David and the Sistine Chapel and mm. all of this kind of um, lavish embellishment, which I, I was fascinated by. But actually in more recent years, I've traveled all through Asia as well. And there's that whole different aesthetic, but just as luscious, which I have in, incorporated in other areas. So it's truly sort of eclectic yep. collection, which I yep. put together, yep. pop stuff, you know, classical European art, um, all, all different, all different things. What was the first major piece that you made? Um, and was it for mm. a commission or was it for an exhibition? Or you just thought, no, I want to make something big and grand to, to give myself mm. the confidence. Um, can you remember? Well, I'd always, I've, I've made big things at art school. Oh, okay. At, you know, at that kind of level where you, you're making it for your end of year exhibition and things. I was never felt restricted by the space that I was in. So I, I would just make big things no matter where I was. And so consequently, my studio now is filled with big things. Yeah, yeah. Um, a, lot, a lot of big things. So uh, thank God you've got a bit yeah, of space. A bit of space. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I made big things right from the time I got my studio for outdoor sculpture works, things like the gas works. Uh, gas works sculpture park, park yeah. which used to have uh, an annual exhibition which yes. was had really really interesting things in it yeah. unfortunately that's no longer um, operating but outdoor spaces require big work yeah because yeah. you know but it must be hard William to actually get a foot in uh, getting the you know like a, a commission to to make something for those um, parks well, or wherever well commissions are a different thing from entering uh outdoor sculpture competition right. because our sculpture competition is just on you yep. to make yep. and to deliver yep. commission is a different thing mm. i love commissions because then you know where the money's coming <laughs> from um but yeah it's a it's it's a different it's a different kind of thing but i do all of it because i make what I want to exist in the world. If somebody pays me for it, I'm all the happier, but I just make things that I'm satisfied with. Right. Um, over, over my shoulder is that beautiful piece, the, the white piece of um, uh, in Werribee Park that was yeah. there for a long time. I remember seeing mm. it and going, wow. And it was mm. white and it was lush and it was so different. Mm. Um, uh, where did the inspiration come from for that? Well, that was uh, a piece that I made entering the Lemp Helen Lemprier sculpture okay. competition, right? Which was something which was the biggest sculpture prize, richest sculpture prize in Australia in its day, and it was very prestigious. I had entered that with my submission for an idea every year since it started, right? And I always got back my entry form you know my slides with the check detached saying please try again next oh. year one year yeah. i entered this piece just as a sketch and and proposal and i was actually overseas in italy at the time and i got a phone call saying well do you want to be in this show or not because a letter had arrived in my letterbox no. asking me to you know <laughs> yes you have been accepted I was first time I was ever accepted. I came back, made the sculpture, entered it, and much to my surprise, won the competition. Of course you did. It's spectacular. So Congratulations. I was, yeah, I was I was really pleased and and so it was called the Comrade's Reward and it is uh, takes the form of a traditional garden sculpture, which suited Werribee Mansion so uh -huh. well. Um, but it is of a uh, youth in his wheat field, bejeweled, holding the bounty of the land in a very kind of fay and um, erotic, but erotic oh, way, yeah. yes. Um, and referencing the Donatello David uh, with his sort of contrapposto, whimsical sort of uh, swish and light up 
gemstones in the wheat field, which would come on at night. Wow. So wow. It, it looked gorgeous. So, yeah. So yes. what, what does that do for your reputation wow. and for your, um, your self-esteem as, as an artist? It certainly, it certainly turned things around for the way the art world saw my work. Yeah. Before then, the art world knew that I existed. They knew that I was making this stuff, but in a lot of ways, I think they thought I was just some kind of gay joke that was around, but not really making serious artwork. And when I was awarded this, the Helen Lempriere, by judges who did not know me at all, they just said they could not award it to somebody else. They wow. had to award it to this. And that turned around a lot of the way the art world saw my practice because I didn't fit into any um, boxes that were, you know, very conveniently set up by art magazines, mm. you know, and yeah. trends that get followed. Yeah. And I never have followed that yeah. because I'm just making Who, stuff I like. Yeah, and, and good on you for, for being like that as well. I've got to talk, and we've got to talk at length about this one. The city of Yarra, who I know mm. have been very good to you, and mm. they, they love your work, and, and you're secretly working on something with them now, which mm -hmm. I, and you've shown me, because I came to your workshop, you've shown me, but yep. of course we can't talk about it because it's not official yet. So that's exciting. We can later, though. We can later. Uh, but you actually, there's this um, uh, statue called Courage. Mm. What, what's that all about? Well, that was a very proud creation for me because it actually speaks to the community that I'm part of as well as the broader community. City of Yarra um, asked a range of artists to propose a sculpture to recognise the LGBTIQ plus communities. Uh -huh. And Ralph McLean, who was the first openly gay artist uh, parliamentarian in Victoria um, and had been the mayor of Fitzroy. And, and this so is I came up with this concept, yeah. which I wanted to be much broader than just the LGBTIQ plus yeah. communities. Yeah. I wanted it to appeal to the same little boy that I was walking through a park and seeing something which inspired. Right. And so I came up with this concept of the cowardly lion from the Wizard of Oz, who was oh. looking for courage, but the wizard told him, it was inside you all along. If you want a badge, I'll give you a badge, but the courage to be who you are, whoever you are, speaks much more broadly than, you know, just trying to come up with a, a pink triangle or something that, that was already a, a used symbol. The Cowardly Lion refers to a much older sort of camp icon, which everybody, when they're an adult, understands what that symbol was. But yeah. as a kid, you don't understand yeah. what, you know, who the Cowardly Lion um, was well, so and, and, and so therefore you've got the the lion's outfit yeah. uh, coming off of the a beautiful male or putting it on or putting it on putting that's it, it on that's, that's with, the, with the head yeah. uh, the lion's head and is that a replica of that's, the yeah that's a cast from the from the mold which is behind that little girl there in that photo um, who, who is um, Dorothy from yeah. the Wizard of Oz yeah, so uh, but. A, Look at look at that, um, uh, the, you know, the lion's head. That is spectacular, and thank you for mm. bringing it in today as oh, part of the, the set. Well, uh, it's you know, sculpture. Like, uh, it's sculpture. <laughs> but you, um, you, you have really captured something very special here. You know, mm. like the the whole thing, the courage. The lion, you know, wasn't sure of its courage, and then realised mm. that there was a man inside. Yeah, when you told me that story, I was blown away with that. Oh, I, I think that because I never thought of it in that realm. And this is the artist's mind, which I, I mm. love so much. And what did the city of Yarra say? Because it's oh, opposite it. the, the Fitzroy Town yeah. Hall, isn't it? Yeah, it's it at uh, Whitlam Place, which is a little park opposite the Napier Hotel and the Fitzroy Town Hall. It's a much loved community park and it sits prominently there. And I often get uh, correspondence from people because my name's on it, they can Google me. Um, 
with their kids playing on it oh, and you know just enjoying it um so it's that's a really important piece for me because it speaks about what what i want to do as a as an artist and yeah. I, I feel as though a yeah a sculpture like this has a legacy yeah and they're actually going to um enhance a little bit more yeah. aren't they? well it's been up there for oh, 10 years now and the led lights in the uh yellow the brick road yeah because yeah. he's sort of on a yellow brick road dance floor kind of thing which refers you know to, has multi multi-layered uh references and we are going to upgrade the LED lights so that it can work with um, changing colours and themes that, that can sort of, you know, recognise everything from, you know, breast cancer to, you know, rainbow to yellow brick road to St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, you know? brilliant. Absolutely <laughs> brilliant. Well, let, let's talk about that piece because it's such a strong piece yeah. along with so many others. Uh, give our, our viewers a bit of an insight, and we'll be showing some of this on the screen, mm. of the process of mm. what what starts first when you're making the, before you make the mould. Mm. Uh, what how, how do you start to erect well, an image like this? Well, uh, all my sculptures always start with drawing and trying to get the concept. Right. Because, it you know, the concept was there, but then you've got to get a pose which suits and working... Uh, with the ideas of scale as well. So my studio is filled with little maquettes of ideas, which some stay small, some grow larger, some don't get used at all. Some, they're waiting for their time right. to speak back to me because they're all ideas. It's a 3D sketchbook. Yep. So then from my little maquette, which I made, um, which was then additioned and went to supporting the casting costs of the bronze sculpture in a very traditional subscription system right, which yep. they used to um, get the community to support all the public sculptures yeah um and so there's uh, several people uh, lots of about 10 people in melbourne and internationally who have one of these little maquettes and very proud owners of them because Brilliant. they've supported the, the work yep then I build an armature to scale, What's an which armature? is like an internal skeleton to oh. hold up the whole clay sculpture. Right. So it's mm. wire or it's steel right. and and support. So uh, it does look like the the bones of a body per it, se. It should. Yep. It should have, I believe, an elegance in itself, oh. which captures the pose, yeah. captures the whole energy of the pose. Uh, a simple stripped back elegance and when you've got the armature right you know that the whole sculpture will have the weight right and, and then I've covered the whole thing with clay uh -huh. which I have a lot of <laughs> and then I can keep that wet for a matter of months. And so take. you're a, a, adjusting the pose and the, the muscle All form. The, and, yeah. yeah and I always work from the nude figure because you cannot, I believe, you cannot model a clothed figure without having the actual anatomy right underneath because that controls where the clothes go. Yep. Um, and then after this months of work, really, um, to get the clay correct, wrapping it in damp cloths and wrapping it in plastic every night and any sculptor, knows what I'm talking about, wrapping, wrapping up. We well, see, this is the lovely thing you're explaining it because I didn't know this mm. and, and our viewer d doesn't know this as yeah. well. So yeah. the amount of time and effort, and, and we're only time. up to the clay the section. Clay. Yeah, and then once the clay is, is approved and everybody's happy with it, then silicon moulds are made, a wax, Car, the moulds are popped off and then a wax is painted inside that to a thickness of about sort of eight mil and then it's cast in bronze from there through the lost wax casting method joined together by my most wonderful foundries here in melbourne parent sculpture foundry who put as much love and care into the work as 
I have. Yeah, well, it's important, isn't it, oh, that you have, have the somebody quality, working with you. Yeah. The quality is absolutely apparent when the work is finished. Yeah. And it stands there 10 years later looking absolutely yeah. beautiful because it's been so beautifully cast. So from beginning to arriving in that park, how long? Well, this was a particularly long time because of, it actually took about four years from oh, beginning to end because whoa. of City of Yarra working to find the funding which could disappear and then would reappear and everything. But that's the, that was the great thing about having the support from such a, a, in a council with that kind of vision that they want this important work to be there, that they kept going with it and they supported it all the Brilliant. way along. They kept the project going and was finally unveiled in 2014 at the big AIDS International Conference. Uh -huh. It was one of City of Yarra's uh, contributions towards that big international AIDS conference. Right. Um, and it got quite a lot of uh, attention then from international people. Yeah. And, and what, what, is, what did it mean to you on that day when it was... Um, oh. it, was it was a really special, special day. Yeah. Um, All those and, years. And, you know, like, and, and how is it, uh, you know, like the new councillors would, have, would be there 10 years ago to now. Mm. Um, how, how are they looking at, at it? Well, they're going to be supporting it by That's right. upgrading. So there's still the support for yeah. the piece? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And that is one of the things about public sculpture is that it does require maintenance. And yep. so it does require ongoing support Ma yep. Yep. and a certain amount of budget to, yeah. to support cleaning, restoration, and um, upgrade. Yep. So. Now we've got to talk about it because um, yeah, it's a, a bit of a landmark here in uh, Melbourne. Uh, the county courts, mm. you know, like the the Lady of Justice, you know, mm. is your piece. How important is that for you yeah, as a sculptor? That one was also a, a fabulous commission to get because it was on the brand new building of the Victorian County Court, which was a public private partnership to, to build that um, facility. And the sculpture came to me uh, as a problem because the Chief Justice wanted a traditional Lady of Justice sculpture, bronze sculpture standing at the front of the court. Right. The architect wanted something <laughs> very abstract yeah. that was to, to, to fit, match the building. To match the building and fit on there. And so I was given the problem of finding a middle ground. <laughs> and so I came up with this concept, um, but originally it had the whole face and everything on it. It was much more traditional in its appearance. And, and I showed the Chief Justice who understood he, uh, what that was. And then I took away, I took it, uh, away the face and the body as a negative and just left it as these wow. sort of Hellenistic shards yeah. on the well, referencing antiquity yeah. and this kind of um, basis of our society, you know, the, uh, yeah. um, and he could still see the figure though. So he was very happy with that. Right. And the architects were also happy with it because it fit with their building mm. and it was fit in that middle ground between something completely abstract, but you can still see yeah. the figure. Yeah. And it added to that kind of sense of uh, anonymity of justice. It, it does not have a race or mm. Mm. an age. Mm or, um, you know, it, it, so it, it worked well. And it's very contemporary uh, mm. and it still stands up today, doesn't yeah. it, as being a very contemporary piece. Uh, and I walked past it so many times, had no idea it was you mm. uh, that uh, uh, had made this. Uh, and again, congratulations, like, look oh, at you, you again, overachieving. <laughs> uh, but then Sir Donald Bradman, Sydney Cricket Ground. Okay, you said, oh, it's only a plaque and I did it years ago. But William, yeah. you actually, you know, like one of the most famous names in Australia yeah. at the Sydney Cricket Ground, you've got this plaque. Yeah, yeah it's a, that kind of thing is very important to get a likeness. Um, and it's also low relief, it's a, which is a, 
a thing in itself very difficult to do. Low relief refers to being like a coin, very not fully three dimensional as most of my work is. Yep. But um, was that a challenge for you? Oh, it's something I do quite oh, a you bit. Do. Okay. But it is a skill in itself because right. you, you know, it's very subtle, the, the rise and fall, and you have to know the way the patina is going to fall in the, in the metal and make shadows where they're supposed to be and things. Yeah. So um, that's another whole, um, a whole realm of sculpture is that kind of relief and low relief. And, yeah. Um, now, what, what's this thing about sheep? <laughs> what? Why, you know, I've, I've seen multiple sheep. There's some yeah. sheep behind you, but I've seen another one. I took a photo when I went to your studio yeah. uh, of you standing with a, a similar but different uh, sheep. Where yeah. did the sheep come from? Well, I have to uh, credit and acknowledge a dear friend of mine and who was a mentor, Les Kozatz, who is well-known uh, Australian sculptor who made the Australian jumbuck famous, you know, the toppling down the ramp at the NGV and behind. He was a lecturer of mine and oh, a friend. Okay. And when I made the Comrades Reward, um, I wanted to make a pair, a, a brother for him, small version of my maquette. And so I thought, I want to do this shepherd. And, but I turned the sheep into these uh, leaves, like kicking through big piles of leaves. And from then I worked with the idea of the Australian, iconic Australian jumbuck as a contribute to my friend Les, who has come from you know, a completely different world to me, but he loved my over-the-top sheep and my <laughs> sort of Baroque flourish to, to everything. <laughs> and as I sort of say, it's a tradition from, you know, Tom Roberts through Les Cossatz, and now I've made my contribution mm. to a, a image of the sheep. Well, I, I think they're absolutely amazing and the shepherd and is, playful is and and so playful, so playful. Now, you had an exhibition last year. It's been a mm. tough time for uh, any artist uh, at 45 Downstairs, mm. which you, you do a, a bit with them. And it was a total sellout. Mm. Uh, you know, that must be very oh. rewarding uh, in a tough um, uh, marketplace, of COVID marketplace. Uh, what, what were they? Because they were little monstery, mm. uh, Asian-y monstery uh, figures, weren't they? Yeah. Well, look, they... they as I was saying, my studio is filled with maquettes. And when COVID started and suddenly all the commissions dried up, mm. everything stopped, you could not get models to come, you could not do anything. Yep. Luckily, I was within five kilometres of my studio and I was there by myself. And on my shelf, these two little pishu, which are, are pan-Asian symbols that invite wealth and good luck into your home, especially relevant for people who've had a tough year. And I thought I'd made these two little pishu during a residency in China 10 years beforehand. And they'd just been sitting on my shelf. Yeah. These two little monsters which eat, have an insatiable appetite for gold and jewels <laughs> And have no asshole, so <laughs> it only goes in, doesn't come out. So I started to make. I thought this is really relevant. Yeah. I had a kiln. I could make these. I could make these works. Um, and so then they morphed and changed as I made pair after pair after pair of them, referencing everything from uh, cicadas to HR puff and stuff to. Um, you know, uh, chocolate cake to, every, you know, just insatiable sort of great playful, bejeweled. But they, they look a little bit angry, don't they're they? Little, they're a little bit, a little bit threatening. You cannot put them any, you cannot put them just anywhere in your house. You cannot put them next to your bed because they're too powerful. Oh, they will yeah. give you bad dreams. <laughs> and you can't put them in front of a mirror because it'll make them nervous. Apparently. Right, apparently, <laughs> yeah. And so that must have been fun. It was fun. It was fun. And 
and so I was different as well. Yeah. So but different. they were still the same kind of, of course. playful, yeah. bejeweled, ornate, lots of luster and, uh, and luscious surfaces. So again, they were taking something from history, uh, an image that was known, and any time, especially Chinese people see them, they know exactly what they are. Right. Even though they've taken a completely different form. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, and just to invite them into, into my world and, you know, because this is the age I live in, you mm. know, that I can collect from all across culture. Yeah, I'm yeah. no longer just that little boy sitting there looking at art magazines oh. at, you know. Do you still look, uh -huh. you've mentioned that about three yeah. times now, so you still think about those days as I a do. little boy looking at the magazines? I do, because that's who I hope to, uh, to have Inspire. influence on. Yeah people who don't have art in their lives and suddenly think oh this isn't this is something i can i can really love and relate and laugh with and and feel you know it's sexy and it's beautiful and it's got lovely surfaces that's what i i hope that my work brings to people. Right. Now, you're, you've got a, a few things happening uh, out of Sydney. Um, uh, the big one next year with the international, um, uh, is it the AIDS conference or LGBT? It's a, no, it's the Pride. Pride, that's Pride. right. So I have an exhibition up there at right. that time. So. Um, and people from around the world will be coming in yeah, and you've apparently. got an exhibition uh, in Sydney with yeah. that. Yeah, oh, it's going to be a sensation. Have you worked it out? Yeah, of course you have. Because you have well, to work so yeah. far in advance. Yeah, 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 yeah. It'll be ceramic pieces, these sort of big chalice pieces. Right, okay. Very ornate again. Um, oh, that'd be an under understatement <laughs> for you. Yeah, ornate. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, William, thank you so much. There's so much more we could talk about. We might have to do an another yeah, time we'll down the track yeah. uh, when you're, you've got another major exhibition happening. Mm. But what a treat it has been speaking to you. And what a treat going into your um, workshop uh, and, mm. and having a chat with you about your work, which I'm sure a lot of those images will um, come up as we've mm. been talking. So thank you so much well, for being on the welcome. show today. It's a great pleasure, David. Thank you. I'm David Hunt, you'll be watching The Art Hunter, and we'll see you again real soon. See ya.